And now I am delighted uh, to introduce to you the outgoing chair of the chamber, who during the day is the full-time president of Bentley University, Gloria Larson. Gloria. Thank you so much, Paul, and welcome, 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 everyone. As chair of the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce, I call the 2010 annual meeting and dinner to order. It has been a tremendous honor to serve as chair these past two years, and it's been particularly rewarding to hold this post as president of Bentley University. With Bentley faculty and staff participating in a number of chamber programs in meaningful ways. But I want to quickly assure my successor, Bob Gallery, that this is the easiest assignment he will ever take on. And that's because Paul Guzzi and his team make it so. The Greater Boston Chamber is such an outstanding organization. It's truly outstanding at helping to develop and promote what is genuinely distinctive about our region. Part of our innovation-driven distinction comes from our ability to achieve both economic growth and social goals. Social goals around education, health care, and expanded economic opportunity. Using the Chamber's clout for all these things, profits and social good, takes a really different kind of business leadership. And the truth is, Paul, you and your talented team have been a driving force between this kind of sustainable growth for more than a decade now. Thank you, Paul Guzzi. Of course, as everybody here well knows, the last 18 months or so have been dreadful, genuinely challenging for the chamber members, for everyone in Massachusetts, and indeed for the entire world. But through these unprecedented tough times, I have had a front row seat watching Paul and his team take these recessionary challenges head on, while also positioning us for better days ahead. Examples include building popular chamber networks and programming for chamber members, building a more competitive business climate through cost reduction and job creation proposals, and building our talent pipeline at all levels through the most distinctive programs anywhere with Harvard, MIT, Suffolk, and now Simmons. Thankfully, we're beginning to see some light at the end of the recessionary tunnel. This means the Chamber can turn its focus full-time, more than ever, to our future. You all may remember that last year, General Electric CEO Jeff Immelt noted in a letter to shareholders that this global financial meltdown represents a reset opportunity for everyone. The Chamber's Renew Massachusetts economic platform is just such a reset opportunity. It consists of four very important business tax proposals that will help put Massachusetts on a more competitive level playing field with our competition. This particular reset opportunity could stimulate the creation of more than 40,000 jobs. And thanks to Paul and his team, it's already gotten significant support among leaders in business, government, and would you believe it, the Boston Globe. Thank you, Paul. Other forward-looking policy initiatives well underway include proposals to help bend the health care cost curve once and for all, continued partnerships with the Boston Fed to retain our best and brightest university graduates, especially from Bentley University, and with the initiative for a new economy to expand opportunities for minority-owned businesses. That would be the Bentley table. And perhaps most importantly of all in today's globally competitive world, strong vocal chamber support for bold new K-12 education strategies around charter schools and readiness schools and to turn around our underperforming schools. Harvard professor Rosabeth Moss Cantor has a brand new book out that I recommend to all of you called SuperCorp. In SuperCorp, she makes it clear that truly world-class companies and regions are about innovation, profits, growth, and social good. More than most, 
our idea-driven region is capable of taking this defining reset moment in just this way. We can figure out smart ways to better serve society and organizational bottom lines. Everyone in this room can make that happen. With the Chamber and our collective leadership, this is what we've long been about, and it's what we'll be about in the future, making us more economically sound than ever before, more diverse, more inclusive, and more civically engaged on the world stage. I have every confidence that with Paul Guzzi, Bob Gallery, and everyone in this room, we're going to do exactly that. Thank you all so much for letting me have this position for two years.